I have to say I much prefer Piers Morgan's interviewing technique in this one to what I did in Killer Women, which I do recommend you watch. But Confessions of a Serial Killer with Piers Morgan was something I was really interested in, and there's a lot about it that I really liked. But I do have some aspects of it that I perhaps not didn't dislike, but I would have liked to have seen done differently or more of. There, there won't be any spoilers in this as such, because I'm not going to just tell you the questions that Piers asked, but it's not really something that you can spoil. I do think it is incredible, currently on Netflix, worth a watch. Just, if you Google it, be a bit careful with what you read around this, because this is not to be confused with Serial Killers with Piers Morgan, which was released in, I think, 2017 and 2018. Confessions of a Serial Killer was released in 2019 and this is just a one episode program and this in this episode Piers interviews a serial killer called Bernard Giles Bernard Eugene Giles and he's been in prison for a very long time decades and it's just him talking to this um, prisoner for f about 45 minutes and on the one hand, I wish there had been more kind of <laughs> more graphic images of the murders. You know, a lot of documentaries when they talk about a particular um, murderer or crime, they use visual aids to back up what they're saying. But this wasn't the case here. But in a way, I liked that because it made it more inviting. It felt more natural. It felt like you were almost part of this conversation with Giles. And I think that worked really well. And I'll talk about Giles' character in a moment. But what I really liked about this one that I hadn't expected was Piers's interviewing style. Because if you watched or listened to my review of Killer Women, you may know that I said that I thought he was doing too much interrogation, wasn't giving them a chance to speak. But in this one, I felt like he was doing a lot more encouraging towards Giles to get him to open up. Certainly at certain points he was trying to prompt him to answer certain questions rather than giving his own opinion and trying to interrogate him. He was just trying to get the information out of him like a decent journalist. So I was actually very pleased with, with the way he did this. It doesn't go into too much detail about the murders. I believe Giles is in prison for five murders, I believe, uh, all of women, and we do get to hear a little bit about the first woman he murdered, and also how he was caught. We hear from Giles the story of kind of where he slipped up and what went wrong and what led to his imprisonment, which is very, very interesting to hear. And what I thought was pretty incredible is that actually Giles is a very fascinating character. He seems very intelligent very intellectual, he's a fantastic artist. We get to see some of his artwork and it's just, it's mind blowing, it's really brilliant. And he actually seems like a nice person. Now some may argue otherwise, but there's just something about him that I liked. I felt like, I won't say I felt like he was remorseful. I think he has accepted his lot in life and knows that this is the way that his brain is wired. Because he talks at the beginning about how he felt these urges to commit these murders, but was able to stop himself until obviously he could no longer do that. So it's not something that he's done out of malice as such, it's more something about the wiring in his brain. And that, that, is, that genuinely happens when something happens to you when you're younger, it stilts your growth, it, it makes your development go off kilter, and it can cause uh, some really serious adverse life-threatening effects and that's obviously what's going on here and in a way I think I think the main thing is that I felt sorry for him because you can tell he genuinely didn't want to commit those murders and he does say I think at one point that after he commits them you know he does he doesn't like the fact that he's done this whereas there are a lot of serial killers who are genuinely pleased with the murders they've committed but I get the impression that he has resigned himself to accepting that this is the way his brain is wired. That doesn't necessarily mean he's pleased with what he's done. 
And I feel, I do feel a little bit of sympathy for him because I don't think he meant any of them. And I don't think he's pleased with anything. He wasn't the kind of person to, you know, commit the murders and then keep trophies like a lot of serial killers do. But it's not that element of pride. For him, it was a need. And that's obviously awful. And if this had been identified earlier, if on that first occasion when he felt that urge to commit murder and was able to walk away, if he had sought professional psychiatric help and if they had taken him seriously, which I know they don't always do depending on who you go and who you speak to, I think this could have been, oh, it could be a completely different story. So the way he presents himself for the most part is very easy to get on board with. And in a way, that's a little bit intimidating because he is a serial killer. We do have some interviews with some people involved in his case, some people who lived opposite him when he was a free man. It adds a little bit to it, but to be honest, I don't think it's that essential. I think we could have done without the interview of the neighbours because they added nothing to it. Not their fault, just it didn't add anything to the narrative at all. And the background information we got from the other interviews was pretty useful. But to be honest, Giles tells his own story and he tells it best. And in a way, I'm thankful that he agreed to do this interview. Because it gives a really, really good insight into the human mind and what can go wrong. And what can happen if you don't get help? And hopefully there'll be somebody watching it who feels that urge to kill somebody because it does happen. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know if this is what it's like, but you know when you're walking over a bridge and you just feel a sudden urge to throw your keys or your phone into the water? It's that really weird, like, I have to do this. And most people can suppress that without problem. But depending on how you're wired, that's not always possible. And I think this is a really interesting study of that. So I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish this was a longer series. I believe this was born off of the back of Serial Killers with Piers Morgan. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I think it's very odd that this is completely separate. But I will look out for the other ones. It's well worth a watch. I wish it was longer. I wish there was more to the series. But I feel like a better person for having heard Bernard Giles' story from his own mouth because it felt like a rare opportunity, a very, very educational moment and I really liked the way Pierce handled it, which I wasn't expecting so all round for me, Confessions of a Serial Killer with Piers Morgan is well worth watching. <laughs>